A very warm welcome to SWAM course on design thinking and innovation. Uh, this is week 6. We shall continue with primary research part 2. In this section, uh, we look at how to make questionnaires, administer them, also how to talk to users and make use of cue cards. So, week 6, section A6. Let us start with a quote. The quote is by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He always has very nice things to say. In this quote, he says, you have to dream. You have to dream before your dreams can come true. So, it is essential that your thought process leads to dreaming. Dreaming means nothing but looking at alternatives, exploring, looking at possibilities and some of these can actually come true. Let us look at week 6. We have done the primary research and we are going to do part 2 of it, understanding the users. We will also look at questionnaires and how to talk to subject experts using a cue card. We will apply it in the project and then have a look at a case study. Let us have a look at primary research part 2, its content. Which phase of the design thinking and innovation process is primary research? What are questionnaires and surveys? What are the different types of questions in questionnaires? How does talking to experts help? Further studies and references. So, if you look at it as part of the design thinking and innovation process, it is still the first phase of the design process. We finish secondary research, we are on to primary research, where we are trying to get original information on trying to understand the user and its activities. That will be followed by analysis, ideation, building, testing and implementing. If you look at the diagram, we are still at the stage where we are looking at lots of alternatives, trying to find information that is relevant to our topic before we move on to analysis. What are questionnaires? Questionnaires have a set of specifically designed questions that will help you gather information from the users. That means that you need to set these questions, administer these questions, get answers to these questions, collate all the answers together. Uh, that could actually become very useful for your topic that you are studying. Questionnaires can also be used to gather information quite quickly. It can handle both quantitative as well as qualitative information. It can also have both open ended questions as well as close ended questions. The difference is open ended uh, very useful for to get opinions, suggestions and close ended is where you are given, given the choice of a few answers to the users and they have to tick one of them or select one of them. What is the difference between questionnaires and surveys? Uh, it is a very subtle difference. Uh, questionnaires usually have a set of questions and surveys refer to the method of collecting, analyzing this information from many respondents. Why are questionnaires so important? First, it helps you gather this data from several of them and you can do it uh, quickly in a fairly short time. 
Uh, you can collect this information in a very systematic organized manner and you can convert these or visualize these in form of charts and diagrams. Uh, which will again help you compare between different uh, data or information and it is very good for analysis and these are also scalable. For example, you can get uh, response from a very large number of people. Like for example, the Indian census data includes information on all the households in India, usually done once in a decade. What are the types of questionnaires? It is important to realize the different types of questionnaires because uh, depending on how you actually do the questions, the responses also depend on it. Uh, there are two types of questionnaires that you can actually administer in person or it can be even done online through the internet or through a phone call. In person questionnaire is ad administered face to face and uh, both are present physically. So, when you ask questions and in turn you write it down. So, this is also very useful in case uh, you know the respondent does not know how to write or also in case which where it needs translation and talking to somebody with a different language. Online is you know administered online or through the internet or through a phone call and the responses uh, are filled. Uh, it can help in getting information very quickly from a large number of uh, respondents and also the respondents can be at different locations. And if you look at it, it is kind of cost effective to do online questionnaires. Let us look at the type of questions. The first is an open ended question, it is unstructured. It means that it is very good for taking suggestions, feedback, you know opinions. Close ended questions or structured questions uh, where uh, the, you give them few choices and the user usually selects one of these choices. Dichotomous questions that means it has two answers typically a yes or no. Multiple choice questions where you have many choices, you can choose more than one. And the fifth one is a scaling question that means you ask them to rate between one figure and another figure. You know I very much like it, I do not like it at all and uh, there are levels in between them. So, let us look at each one of them open ended or unstructured questions allow a free expression or opinion uh, that is the nice part of it. Okay, But uh, you need to collate all this information and if you have too many of them you will have too many opinions. So, for example, how do you like the course on design thinking and innovation so far? Each one of you will write the answers in a different manner. Okay, so, uh, open ended questions are great for this. Let us look at close ended or structured questions. Uh, these have a predefined set of answers that means that I give them a choice of answers. Okay. So, for example, how did you like the design thinking and innovation course? Uh, choice 1 is very much, choice 2 is somewhat and third is not at all. Okay, so, you make a choice between one of these as answers. So, these are called as closed ended questions which are predefined answers. Dichotomous questions uh, like it sounds uh, it is binary in nature. So, it has an yes and no. Okay, did the design thinking and innovation course talk about tools? So, if you remember tools you will say yes, if you do not remember you will say no. So, let us look at some more questions. Fourth is the multiple choice questions that means that they have many answers to a question. Uh, for example, uh, asking the question are these the phases of the design thinking and innovation process? Uh, first is research, 
analysis, ideation, marketing and prototyping, right? Maybe one of them is not really part of the design thinking and innovation process, okay? So, if you tick the correct ones, then uh, you are giving the correct answers. Scaling questions, again, you, there are different types of scaling questions. Basically, it is a qualitative test where you make a choice between a range of possibilities, okay, and they are either increasing or decreasing in nature. Uh, like for example, let us look at the Lichter scale questions, it is called also as the rating scale, okay, which has this uh, rate between, uh, you know, for example, here strongly agree, neutral, strongly disagree. So, it is a scale, it is a qualitative scale that I am using. Okay, so, quality of the DTI course was good, strongly agree, neutral, strongly disagree. Okay, so, you make the choice between this rating scale. You can use a numerical uh, to do that. Okay, rate the quality of the design thinking and innovation course from a scale of 1 to 5. 1 being very bad and 5 being very good. Okay, so, if you tick for example, Number three, it is like average, it is not too bad, it is not too good, it is kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, there is also a scale called as the semantic differential, but basically it uh, takes into expressions on opposite sides. Uh, so, for example, rate the quality of the design thinking and innovation course from being very easy to difficult. Okay. So, uh, this is the expressions, right? Easy and difficult. So, you can do that. Okay. You can do it also, for example, uh, whether you find this uh, cup beautiful or ugly, right? So, these are two expressions and you can actually rate them in between these, okay? So, these are called as scaling questions, the Lichter scale. Uh, you can use numbers or you can use expressions. So, they are called as Lichter scale questions, numerical scale questions and semantic differential scale questions. This is, we have mentioned this before, when we were doing contextual inquiry, the same holds good here, uh, because you are going to be administering a questionnaire, uh, you know, and people have to answer them, okay. Yeah, you cannot assume that everybody would answer your questions. You know. So, you need to seek permission before you can do that, okay. And uh, we mentioned this before, if it involves user groups, uh, where you have to respect their privacy, especially children, elderly and, you know, persons with disability, uh, you need to be very sensitive to their concerns, be respectful of their culture, you know, traditions, yeah. and. Uh, uh, for these user group, it is always good to get the clearance for your study from your institution's ethics committee. Uh, uh, it is important factor. Uh, so, please remember that if it involves any of these categories. So, let us move on to, you have done the questionnaires and getting answers to it. Okay. Why do you need to talk to experts? Okay, so, that is the part 2 of this uh, process. Subject experts have a lot of knowledge and expertise about the subject. Okay, so, if you go and talk to them, okay, they can provide you with in depth information very relevant to your topic. Okay, so, you are basically digging into their, uh, you know, knowledge. Okay, so, it depends on the topic that you have chosen, experts could be any of these, it could be scientists who are working in this field, faculty usually have lot of knowledge, uh, because that becomes the area of expertise. Uh, if it is, uh, you know, field officers for example, have uh, very much knowledge about the ground experience, okay. it could be managers who holding uh, you know, positions and responsibilities and they have knowledge of that particular subject. So, you need to find out if there is an expert and who could be that expert and uh, get permission and go and talk to them. 
let us look at further studies and references. It is the same references which I mentioned in the in week 5. The main reference of course is dsource.in slash dti followed by the book on contextual design and the book on human interface. Let us end uh, with a quote. Uh, this quote is by Paul Klee, German Swiss artist. He was a faculty member at the Bauhaus school in Germany and uh, he worked a lot on basic elements of design. His book on color is, is a classic book. He says it is a very nice statement, one eye sees and the other feels. He is making a connection between the physical reality of perception versus the emotional reality of feeling and says both are important and both are connected together. Again, uh, very important for design. So, thanks a lot for listening. So, week 6, section A6. Let us summarize. We did primary research uh, part 2, where we looked at questionnaires and talking to experts. So, we move on to the tool. Uh, of making questionnaires and talking to subject experts uh, using a cue card. Then we apply it in the project and then look at the project as a case study.